So the NBA draft has concluded. We are in the midst of free agency. We're in day two, I believe. It started last night officially. And the Nets, they did bring back Joe Harris. I didn't put it in the graphic over here, but Joe Harris is back. Four years, $75 million. Wow, he got paid. I'm happy for Joe. He's my favorite guy on the team, so thank God he's back. Other news, Landry Shamit was traded for. The 19th overall pick was sent to the Pistons, I believe, in a three-way trade. Luke Kennard goes to the Clippers. I don't really get it from the Clippers standpoint. Like I look at Luke Kennard and, and Landry Shaman as like similar type players. I know one's a lefty. I know I think uh, Kennard's a bit bigger, like a little bit, but both guys are 23. I'm like, I don't really know. It seemed like a lateral move to me. Maybe there's more to it. I don't know. But the Nets, I thought, made a good move here. The Nets are looking to have a two to three year window of competing. Whoever you took at 19 overall is probably going to be a bit of a project. There's a lot of young kids in the draft, obviously. There's some guys that are coming out out of their junior and senior year. But why not trade for an established NBA player like Landry Shamit? And it makes sense to me because now, like, if we lost Joe Harris, it would have been easier to swallow if we had you know, Landry Shamit on the roster. But now you have both guys, and I love it because they both have similar games. They're just really good spot-up shooters. I think Shamit offers a little more offensively. Not to say Joe Harris is not an all-around player, but Shamit, you can tell, is a better ball handler. I think he's a bit longer. He's kind of better on defense. He can block more shots. Um, Both guys give a lot of effort on the defensive end, which is what you want. But, you know, when both of these guys are running off screens from Jared Allen and DeAndre Jordan and making 40% of their three-pointers, maybe more, it's going to be dangerous. And I love it because one guy might have an off night. Joe Harris has his nights where he goes two for seven, one for five from three, but then you have Landry Shamit, and the chances that both guys have an off night, it's probably not likely. They'll have a few games a year, probably one or two a year, but chances are one of those guys is going to be shooting the ball well. Um, There might be games where both of them are shooting the ball well, and the Nets will be basically unbeatable. And we all know that it comes down to the health of Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, But I love what the Nets have done so far. I think they've built this team the right way. It seems like the James Harden stuff was, it's in the rearview mirror now. I mean, they could make a trade still. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Landry Shamit's another asset that they can basically flip and trade. I'd rather keep him at this point. But honestly, they could go out and trade for James Harden. It would not shock me. Um, I just love this team a lot. I mean, you look at the depth on this roster, and I don't know how they can afford all this. When I saw Joe Harris is getting $75 million, it shocked me. But man deserves it. I will say that. But I don't know how they're affording all these guys is what I'm trying to say. Like you have, you know, Karis LeVert, Dinwiddie, Joe Harris, Torian Prince. Um, they're on some pretty decent deals. Like I think they're making somewhere from like the 8 to $12 million per year range, maybe more for a couple of them. So they got those guys. They have the max contracts with Kyrie and Kevin Durant, of course. I don't know if they're max contracts, but they're making like 30 plus million a year. So I don't know how the Nets are affording all this. And they have DeAndre Jordan making $10 million a year. So like, yeah, they are making a good amount of, uh, you know, they're giving out a good amount of money here, but I guess they can afford it. And, you know, my dream free agency to complete this and wrap it all up would be to uh, sign Serge Ibaka. Now, you know, I didn't know what I wanted. I, I didn't know if I wanted James Harden or wanted to just continue to build the depth and hope that would work. At this point, after acquiring Shamit, I kind of just want to go all in with the depth. You know, have Durant and Irving as your superstars and bring in Dinwiddie, bring in Levert, bring in Shamit, bring in Joe Harris, all these guys. Use them as depth pieces and just hope that this works out. Now, this is a team that does have some injury concerns. Their best two players are coming off, you know, not major injuries for Kyrie Irving, but a major injury for Kevin Durant. But Kyrie Irving himself has a lot of injury history and definitely a lot of concerns there. But the Nets now have enough insurance with Dinwiddie behind him. Of course, Levert can run the point. We saw that. Uh, Chris Chioza is not bad. Like, you know, he he could be okay as a backup point guard. So I kind of like the depth right now. Like, I hope we don't surrender all of that for James Harden. Um, If it was for Bradley Beal, maybe a different story. But, you know, there's rumors about John Wall being traded now. So maybe they blow the whole thing up there. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. But I think, I don't know if it was the Wizards who signed Gallinari. No, it was the Hawks. I thought it was the Wizards for some reason. But, yeah, I don't know what the Wizards are going to do, honestly. But I don't want any part to John Wall. I hope that doesn't happen. That makes no sense. But um, but yeah, I like the move a lot. 19th pick for a guy like Shamit who, you know, he can help you on, on the defense. He's not the best defender, don't get me wrong. But as I said, he's long. He can block some shots. He'll have himself, you know, some nice highlight reel blocks at some point. You know, he'll, he'll do that for you. He gives a lot of effort. And he's kind of like Joe Harris. I just think he's basically Joe Harris, but a bit more of a ball handler. That's pretty much it. You know, they're both really good shooters. I think Joe Harris is probably a bit of a better shooter, but I think the fit for this team is very nice. And I think if someone 
kind of suggested on like a podcast maybe or something like that. And they were like, what if the Nets trade for J.J. Redick or sign him? I don't know if he's a free agent, but I was like, wow, J.J. Redick would be an awesome fit here. But we basically got another version of J.J. Redick. You know, I mean, he's a much younger version. He's 23 years old, Andrew Shamit. And um, he's making $2 million this year. Next year for 21-22, there's a $3.7 million team option, which I'm sure they'll pick up. So the guy's on a very nice contract for the next two years. So um, yeah, that's fine. He's a 40% career three-point shooter, as you can see, just under 10 points per game, 42% from the field. Um, player efficiency rating is 9.9. I don't even know what a good player efficiency rating is. I don't look at that stuff too much, but I threw it in there anyway. And an 82% free throw percentage. So he's a good player. I don't expect him to be a star here, but he'll definitely contribute to what I hope to be a Nets championship team. Now, of course, it depends who stays healthy and things like that. But if Shamit's there for a championship run, he'll be a big piece of it. So I will say that. And the last thing I wanted to touch on was the Nets second round pick, Reggie Perry. So I didn't know who Reggie Perry was. I didn't know a lot of second round picks in this draft. I'm not going to lie. But Perry seems to be an interesting prospect. And some people that cover the draft say it was a good pick, a good sleeper pick, quote unquote, for the Nets. Um, he's 20 years old, 6'10", 250. And I just go off the highlights. Like, I really don't care about the numbers too much. I put his numbers here, 17 points per game, 10 rebounds, 50% from the field, 32% from three, and 76% from the free throw line. So when looking at him on tape or watching the highlights, I guess you could say, um, he, the guy's a pretty smooth jump shot for someone who's 6'10". And the thing that really stood out to me is that he can take guys off the dribble. Like, when you see a big man who's 6'10", 250, out on the wing and taking guys off the dribble, taking them to the rim... It's like, wow, that's a really impressive skill set for someone that size. Like when you think of 6'10", 250, you probably think of a guy that hangs around the basket, rim protector. But no, this guy brings another aspect of the game where he can just, you know, expand the floor, kind of stretch the floor and make these corner threes. He can even, you know, hit from top of the key. Um, I don't know if he can hit from the NBA range of three. It's a bit further back, as we know, but I'm sure he can work on that. He's still very young. He'll be like kind of what Nick Claxton was last year. I don't expect him to play much this season, unfortunately. Um, could go to the G League, of course, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, if there's injuries in front of them or if, you know, DeAndre Jordan, Jared Allen or someone like that is not playing up to their standard, maybe they bring in Reggie Perry to play some minutes at some point. But he's a pretty impressive guy. I think he's strong. He didn't seem to have the greatest vertical leap, but it's really not a concern to me. Like maybe he's not, you know, maybe his ceiling as a rim protector is not there, but he's very strong. I will say that he's able to just move people out of the way. Seemed like a good rebounder to me, so it really depends how much he plays. I don't expect him to be an impact player right away. He's not going to be like what a top five pick in this draft would be, but if they develop him the right way, there is a lot to work with there, and hopefully they do end up um, you know, finding the sleeper of the draft in the second round. So we'll see how he turns out, but I will say I'm intrigued by Reggie Perry. I think it's not... You know, it's not out of the question that one day he can maybe be a really key player off the bench for this team a couple years down the line. I think it's a very, you know, it's a possibility. And in the event that the Nets don't get Serge Ibaka, which is what I want, Reggie Perry kind of has a similar game to Serge Ibaka. You know, he can stretch the floor, as I said. He can play some pretty good defense. He's strong. So, you know, he's not going to be prime Serge Ibaka jumping out of the gym. But, like, at the same time, he has some of that skill set with him. But it really depends how much he plays this year. And now that I mentioned I'm kind of a... Uh, Kind of interested to see what kind of role Nick Claxton has with the Nets this year. I'm not really sure if they even have room for him, honestly. But we'll actually go over the Nets' depth chart real quick before we wrap this thing up for uh, for good. But you look at the point guards here. Kyrie Irving, Spencer Timwitty, Chris Chioza. Love that. Shooting guard, they have it listed as Karis LeVert. Bruce Brown, who they traded for from the uh, Pistons for a second-round pick, I think it was. I don't know much about him. Limited offensive game. They say he's a really good perimeter defender, so we'll see how much he plays. If the Nets are you know, facing a guard that's going off against them on offense, then maybe they bring in Bruce Brown to try and slow him down. I don't know. I don't expect him to have much of a role on this team, but we'll see. Landry Shaman, as we see, or as, I, as we talked about before. Joe Harris, uh, Timothy Luabu Cabarro. I forgot about him, honestly. Kevin Durant, Torian Prince, Rodion Skourouk. I don't know what's going to happen with Torian Prince, honestly. Like, I I think Prince has a pretty, you know, his, his contract's pretty fat. I'll put it that way. So I don't know if they're going to pay him or try to trade him. I have, I have no idea. Like, maybe do you try to... I don't know if the Nets can afford this team, is what I'm trying to say. Especially if they sign Serge Ibaka. Like, the Nets might be in a situation where they have to trade... Torian Prince plus a draft pick to another team to clear out his contract. So I don't know. Maybe they try and run it back with Torian Prince. He wasn't god awful last year, but I expected a lot more to be honest with you. So who else we got? DeAndre Jordan, Jared Allen, Nick Claxton, and of course uh, Reggie Perry. So yeah, I mean, look, they have a pretty pretty damn good team up and down. So 
Um, if they traded for James Harden, a lot of this depth would not be here. So I'm pretty satisfied with this team, and we'll see what they do. Um, I will say if the Nets are healthy, this is a 72-game season, I believe. I mean, if this is a healthy team, I don't think 45-50 wins is out of the question. I think that's a very reasonable expectation if these guys are healthy, and maybe even better. Um, I have a a strange confidence that Steve Nash is going to end up working out really well here. Mike D'Antoni, of course, known to have one of the better offenses in the NBA since he's been a head coach. So I'm really excited, very intrigued about this team. How will they look? We still have not seen Kevin Durant in a Nets uniform yet on the floor. I'm very excited for it. And it's going to suck that there's no fans for like the home opener. I mean, the Nets don't have like a ton of fans, as we know. It's not like the Knicks, of course. But um, it would be awesome to see that. But I guess we'll have to wait till hopefully next year. But we'll see. But yes, I'm very excited about this team. I do want Serge Ibaka. Um, I don't know who else is out there in free agency still. But I'm at the point. I'm just at peace with everything Sean Marks does. Because as the Nets GM, he's been here for three or four years at this point. Everything this man does usually ends up playing out very well. As I said the last Nets video, the one bad thing I saw from him was the Allen Crabb trade. That's really the only bad thing, you know? So, like, outside of that, Sean Marks has been money. I trust the guy, and hopefully, as long as the Nets stay healthy next year, they will be a very, very good team. So, leave in the comments how you feel about this offseason. Who should the Nets go out and sign in free agency with, like, their one last remaining spot? I mean, they probably don't have a ton of money left, so keep that in mind as well. But um, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you guys next time.